Have you ever had a wild snake show up in your yard or maybe on your front porch? Or maybe you've had one actually get inside your house. If you did, maybe you thought that was really cool. Or <laughs> maybe you kind of freaked out a little bit. Either way, if you don't like snakes and you don't want them in your yard and you don't want them in your house, which is the opposite of me, <laughs> but if that's you, then this video is for you. So today uh, we're here uh, talking with Daniel Sollenberger. Uh, there's a bunch of chickens behind us, <laughs> which uh, we're talking about snakes in your yard and even snakes in your house. And this is a call we get multiple times a day, especially during snake season when it's really busy. So we're gonna talk about some things about what to do and what not to do if you end up with a snake. Now, for me, if I end up with a snake in my yard, that's a pretty good day, okay? But for most yeah. people, it, it's a horrible day. So this is for you if you don't like snakes. So you, you walk into your kitchen or someone starts screaming, there's a snake inside your house. It's one thing to have a snake outside your house, but it's very different to have a snake inside your house, okay? Right. And so this freaks people out. So um, have you ever dealt with a venomous snake in someone's house? The closest I've come to that was in a, uh, a screened in patio. Yeah. Uh, that was, you know, had a door and, and this, there was a copperhead that had crawled in there. Um, there were no steps leading up to the, to the doorway so it could easily come in and they had left the door open and it got in there and it was having some trouble figuring out how to get out. Yeah. Uh, I told them to just leave the door open and it would probably crawl out on its own and it, it couldn't figure that out. And so eventually they did encourage it to leave. Um, but that's the closest I've come to. It's not a common occurrence. Yeah. So this year is the 30th year that I have been answering 911 calls to remove snakes from houses. 30 years this year. And in those 30 years of removing a lot of snakes, I only remember one venomous snake inside of a house. Yeah. And it was not where I would ever expect to find it. I still don't know how it got there, but it was in a laundry room. And, and, and this was on a, um, like a crawl space. So you wouldn't think of Copperhead would end up, you know, crawling and getting up in here. But uh, they sent me a photo in the laundry room of a, a, a clothes basket piled with dirty clothes sitting on top was about a two foot copperhead, okay? And that's the photo I got. I'm like, wow. So I drive to the house. Of course, by the time I get there, the copperhead's nowhere to be found. So I'm searching, don't find the copperhead in there. And then I'm like, well, maybe he went back under the house somehow. So then I crawl under the house looking for the copperhead, can't find him. I look in the laundry room one more time and there he is. I didn't even have to go under the house. Yeah. He had moved from the laundry basket over to a shelving unit. It was on like the third shelf up. And that's the first copperhead I've ever found inside of a house. I've got them out of uh, carports, garages, porches, like you're mm -hmm. saying that, but never inside of a house. So um, I think it's a really rare thing to actually have a venomous snake in your house, but it does happen. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. I mean, it, you know, like I said, I've never had one actually in a house, but it does occasionally come up. So. I guess we should talk about what what should you do in that very unlikely scenario. Well, what should you do with a snake in general? Because well, that's the more common because, occurrence. Because the uh, thing about it is, if you have a snake in your house, <clears throat> most likely it's going to be non-venomous. Right. Not always. Yeah. But if you don't know what it is, treat it, like treat it, it as a venomous yeah. snake. Okay? <laughs> that's the best thing Every to do. Every gun's a loaded gun. Yeah, right. right. You know, yeah, just, exactly. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, if, if, if you don't know what it is and... Um, then you, you certainly don't want to just reach down and pick it up, which is something you could do with most non-venomous snakes. Yeah. Um, it could be that simple. Um, talk someone into that who's freaking out <laughs> yeah, on the phone. Yeah. Just pick it up yeah. and take it outside. <laughs> right. So, you know, if, if we're assuming that it's venomous, whether it is or not, um, you got to realize that the snake's not going to come after you. You know, if you see it and you're, you know, a few feet away from it, even if it is venomous, it's not going to close that distance to come get and, you. And that's something that's hard for people to believe because of all these myths and 
all these folk tales of snakes chasing people. I don't care what your uncle's daddy told you, whoever, snakes don't chase people. Snakes will go toward a person, but not so they can come and get you. They don't even really know what you are. So, you know, a snake in your house does not want to come over and bite you. What that snake wants to do is to find his way back outside of your house. Uh, you know, snakes don't come into houses to set up shop and to live there. That's not what they do. They don't come into your house to nest or lay eggs or to have babies. Uh, typically, the reasons I think snakes come in is a few reasons. One reason could be a lot of rain. So a little small snake will just go under underneath a door finding a place to get in to get dry uh, maybe the temperature drops and it's a warm place to go they get it end up inside that way uh, sometimes when a snake is getting ready to shed its skin you know their eyes get kind of cloudy and they can't see very well which means they can't protect themselves against predators and they look for a place just to hide for two or three days that's why you find snake skins in your attic and snake skin right. under your house because that's an easy place for snakes to go and they go they shed their skin then once that's over it's time to leave a snake is not going to live long term under your house or in your attic provided there's not ample food and things like that i mean even even if they're getting food under the house they are usually coming and going yeah you know i've seen where like a rat snake has maybe lived under a house for a while lived under a house use the under the crawl space of a house for an extended period of time. They kind of come and go. Come and he, go. He's not just sitting you know, there for six it's months. A safe yeah. place. He might find if you have mice, you know, mouse problems or something. He may be getting those. But they they come and go. Um, you know, there's usually nothing to make a want snake want to stay in your house. In particular, in the lived-in portion of your house. You know, we're you know a crawl space is one thing. Finding one in your bedroom is very out even there, even you know. a pet snake that you love mm -hmm. okay and yeah. you're feeding this thing and caring for it if it gets loose it will try to get out it of your will house. try to get out of the house and <laughs> yeah. go somewhere else okay it's not just going to sit in the room yeah where, where it got exactly out. So, um so keep that in mind they don't want anything to do with you you can go in the room with it uh and uh it's not going to come closer to try and bite you now it might get scared and start crawling around and they they'll um, move pretty quick wiggling yeah. around because the lawn can't get traction good on mm -hmm. like linoleum floors yeah, or you know, hardwood and floors and, and even some carpet they can't they move quick mm -hmm. but they don't go from point a to point b right. very quickly so right so you know you have the opportunity then to get close enough to use some tools to help you contain that snake or if you're comfortable move it yourself now if you know it's venomous and you have no experience um you know, maybe you don't want to try and move it yourself. And that's probably the safest thing to do, but you do need to at least ha be able to keep eyes on it or contain it in some way. That's one of the biggest problems we see when I get a call and someone's got a snake in their house, they freak out, they slam all the doors, they run outside and they're like, okay, I'm not going back in my house. And then they finally get in touch with me an hour later or sometimes two days later. Mm -hmm. Now yeah, there's a snake in my house yesterday. <laughs> well. Where yeah. is it now? It's probably gone. But if I say it's probably gone, that's not good enough for the homeowner. They yeah. want to know what's gone. Yeah. So if you see a snake in your house and you're not going to remove it, you're going to call me or call someone else to remove it, keep your eyeballs on the snake. Watch it. If it crawls off somewhere, let it crawl off. But watch if it goes behind your mm -hmm. stove. We know it went behind your stove. We moved your stove and we might find a snake or we might find a hole in your floor yeah. where the snakes are coming and going, okay? So, but keep your eyes on the snake. Yeah, that's right. Keep your eyes on it. Um, if it's not, a, if it's in a place it could uh, easily get, say lost behind, uh, you got a really heavy, something you wouldn't want to move, you know? A like refrigerator. A, a refrigerator <laughs> yeah. or a gun safe or, a, you know, something like that. Um, one thing you can do to try and contain that snake is to put something on top of it like a bucket or a trash can is even better, like a kitchen trash can, uh, because they're tall and they allow you to keep your hands far away from the animal. Yeah. So you can take that tall trash can and set it on top of it. And we're assuming this is a fairly small snake that yeah. got in your house, right? Um, it got in a, in a small area, it's probably not a very big snake. Set the trash can over it and then you could put a weight on top. That's maybe. always a good um, thing because uh, we've seen people put buckets and trash cans over snakes yeah. And the snake can push out from under it, and yeah. then you lift a bucket or you lift your trash can, and the snake's not yeah. there, and that's unsettling to some people. Yeah. So, um, um, you know, like like a, a, a jug of water or um, 
some books, whatever yeah, you got, books, just, just something to weight know, it down. And then it, it's trapped there, and then yeah. you have time to get someone like you or or, or uh, some other uh, wildlife control. Now, operator. one one thing you just mentioned was using some tools, and a trash can is a good tool mm -hmm. to use. But one thing you'll see snake people using are snake hooks and snake tongs. Mm -hmm. um, it, I don't recommend you getting a snake hook. Uh, unless you're a person who wants to learn about snakes and you're going to learn how to use a hook yeah. because these wild snakes they don't just sit on a hook okay yeah, unless you yeah. know how you to know, use you know a how hook. you're using it you can yeah. sometimes get them to sit it, on it takes a little practice to uh, do that and the, sometimes the snakes have to get practiced a little exactly bit to yeah doing it. so yeah um you know yeah i mean it's if you want to get one and have one handy you know you can use them to pick up trash in the yard and yeah. stuff too um <laughs> But you don't necessarily need that, but you also have a lot of other things in your home that are a similar length and can perform, you know, a similar service. I think the best thing to have is a broom. Yeah, brooms are great. And, and you can uh, use that indoors or outdoors, mm -hmm. and you can, uh, you know, you can press a snake down with it to hold them still while somebody's grabbing a trash can, mm -hmm. or you can take it and actually just sweep them right out the door. Yep. You know, so that's a yep. possibility too. A small snake, you know, you can, if you're near a doorway, you could just gently scoot them along and... Mm -hmm and sweep them out on the steps and they'll crawl off back to whatever they were doing. So you got a snake in your house and you get this thing removed, but then you're wondering, well, how did the snake get in my house to begin with? Because you don't want another snake to come in. Mm -hmm. Because if that snake came in, there's probably a reason he came in. And uh, now, now sometimes it doesn't mean that you have mice. You know, one snake we see in houses all the time are little brown snakes. And, and most of the time, if we have a, like a little brown snake in a house, um, I usually know that the person's probably not on a crawl space. They're probably on a slab, okay? Because brown snakes can climb, but they normally don't climb structures very well. Right. They're so short, yeah. they just can't really And so much. if you're having little snakes in your house, one good thing to check is your uh, weather stripping around your doors. Mm -hmm. Go inside your house in the daytime, shut your door. If you can see daylight coming in around the bottom edges of your door, a, a little snake can probably come in and that's an easy fix. You just replace the weather stripping. Another place we see snakes come in is laundry rooms. Um, some houses have the vent that expels the hot air from your dryer up on the roof. If that's the case, that's great. Most houses don't. Most of them are on the exterior wall somewhere. Now, if that dryer exhaust is down low, that's fine as long as it's covered. So go out there, figure out where you're exhaust is for your dryer and make sure that vent is covered or has some type of cover to prevent wildlife from coming up into it because what happens is a mouse comes up in there chews that little foil hose mm -hmm. and now he goes back and forth and he's leaving a scent trail a snake follows the scent trail and goes in the same house the same hole the mouse mm -hmm. is using and we see that a lot. That's a, a lot of times how rat snakes get into houses. Mm -hmm. They're just following the scent trails of their prey items. The other place I see snakes come in is under the sinks in bathrooms and kitchens. Go and uh, pull all your stuff up out of your sink. Everybody's got the Everybody's pile of stuff. Everybody's got a pile of stuff because I had to move it. <laughs> move all that stuff and look at your plumbing where it comes up through the floor. A lot of times what I see is when they built the house, they drill a hole this big and they put a pipe through it that's this big. Yep. Then you got a big gap around here. Well, that's the same way here. Yeah, and snakes <laughs> crawl up right in this big hole, yeah. but that's an easy fix. It's you easy. Spray you foam can go, or... yeah, spray foam at a hardware store, and it, you know, what's that, less than $10 a can yep. for that stuff, and then just spray it and it'll seal it up, problem solved. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, so, so check those areas, and that will do a lot because. It's better not to have a snake in your house to begin with. Okay, right. so we got a snake out of the house. We've sealed up the house, and um, now the snake's in the yard. Or now maybe another snake has just shown up in the yard, and you don't want a snake here. Right. Uh, well, well, one thing I tell people all the time is you can't snake-proof your yard, okay? You can do things to reduce snakes wanting to come to your yard, mm -hmm. but you're still going to occasionally have a snake wander through there. And most people will say, well, I don't ever see snakes here. Well, this is because you don't ever see them, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're there. And uh, uh, so you got a snake there and you want him gone. Well, I recommend just leaving him alone and he'll leave on his own anyway. That's 
most of the time that's the case. You've got to remember, most of the snakes you're going to see are going to be non-venomous snakes anyway. Yeah. They pose absolutely no danger to any humans or pets. Um, those snakes can certainly just be left and to, to crawl away on their own. Um, they're actually good to have around. But what about the people who said the only good snake's a dead snake? Okay, because, yeah. you know... Um, if you don't like snakes and don't want to learn about them, then go buy a bunch of snake repellent and put it around your house. <laughs> it's not going to do anything, but it'll make you feel better, okay? <laughs> if you want to learn about snakes and you still don't want them around, then that's a good thing. We can teach you how to get rid of them. So snake repellent does not work. Mm -hmm. I don't care what brand it is. Mothballs, lime, sulfur. They say sulfur stinks so bad it'll make the snakes go away. Uh, you'd have to put out so much sulfur that you couldn't even live in your house. Yeah. <laughs> and lime, they say it burns their bellies. It does not burn their bellies. Mothballs, uh, you know, it's illegal to put mothballs on the right. ground. That's that's an off-label use. For yeah. Mothballs. And the reason is is because mothballs have a couple chem uh, chemicals in them that are really dangerous. One is called naphthalene, mm -hmm. and which has been shown to cause cancer. Mm -hmm. You know, if you put that in your house or in your yard and you're inhaling that. That's not a good thing. Right. It's, it's and insectic. it's not going to repel snakes, okay? <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, but here's what they do. People put the stuff out, and then, because they've seen a snake, mm -hmm. okay? And then, then the snake crawls off, or they kill it or whatever. Then they put out their snake repellent, whatever chemical they use. And then they, they don't use. see one for <laughs> six months. <laughs> exactly. It and it works. <laughs> and then when yeah. they see one, what do they think? I need it's, to put out more. It's time to reapply <laughs> it because this is not effective anymore. And yeah. people so believe it works. And these companies can't quit selling it because mm -hmm. it makes too much money. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so uh, if someone's trying to sell you snake repellent, they either don't know what they're doing or they're trying to rip you off. That's it. <laughs> when there's something that works, the back of that venom band will be stocked with it, okay? And I will try to sell it to everybody. <laughs> I wish there were something. I can make a lot of money right. off of it. There's, there's not right now. Right. It's it's uh, the best thing, like you said earlier, the best thing to do is just to make your yard as inhospitable to snakes as possible. Now, that's the opposite of what I normally tell people <laughs> to do. Not just for snakes, but yeah. other wildlife. You know, the things you do to attract wildlife to your yard aren't exclusive to the animals you like. You know, you have a bird feeder that also attracts rats and mice and other things snakes like to eat. You have a water feature, a little frog pond or something that attracts things snakes like to eat. Um, having a you know a, a lush garden full of native wildflowers that's a good place for snakes to hide. And, you know, so just understand that those you can't really separate the two. But do the opposite of all that. <laughs> you know, um, you got a web page, right? Uh, that outlines some ways to, to yeah, keep your guide, yard. guide to a snake free yard yeah. and. Uh, it can be things as simple as leaving your porch light on at night. You know, um, I recommend leaving your porch light on because it deters burglars. You know, the, a house that's lit up well is less likely to be burglarized. But a porch light attracts moths and insects, and that attracts uh, lizards and frogs and toads. And those attract snakes that like to eat lizards, frogs, and toads. So, um, you know, th that can be a thing. But one, one problem, and I see at houses all the time, and I think this is something really important, is when you when I'm walking up to someone's front door and I'm on the sidewalk, and on each side of the sidewalk is beautifully manicured, these wonderful plants, and but they're really thick. Mm -hmm. And if I was a snake, I could so easily hide underneath mm -hmm. there. And so when you gotta think these snakes wanna come out in the evenings and hunt, and um, they'll, they'll come out of those bushes, lay on the edge of that warm concrete. And if you're walking, talking on your cell phone, you may not see the copperhead you're about to step on. So if you have overgrown vegetation, tr make sure it's not near walkways. Mm -hmm. You know, put it way over there. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, that's where the snakes live, way over there, okay? <laughs> yeah. They don't live right here at your door. Right. Because you don't want to walk out, step off your step, and step onto mm -hmm. a venomous snake. Right. Yeah, and, um, you know, the, the trimming, uh, well, going along with those gardens and hedges is the the kind of ground cover you use like if you mulch your flower beds what you choose to mulch with can attract snakes like um, pine straw is a really attractive thing to snakes like we've talked about it's easy for them to get under it and travel under it yeah you know I, I don't ever recommend using pine straw on your flower beds because it doesn't attract snakes per yeah. se snakes don't sell there's 
pine straw over here, let's right, go there. Right. But when they find it, it's a hiding place because mm -hmm. they can burrow underneath it and crawl where they mm -hmm. want to go. So I tell people instead of pine straw, use bark, mulch, or rock, which those don't repel snakes, but it's harder for at least copperheads mm -hmm. and venomous snakes to burrow underneath it so that you're eliminating a hiding place by getting rid of the pine straw. Right. Same thing with leaf litter. You got mm -hmm. leaves all piled up. Yeah. You know, some people will go out and they'll trim branches and they'll just pile them up in one area. Kind of like I did in my front yard. That's a yeah. great thing to do <laughs> if you like snakes. Okay, that's, there's so, a brush pile right over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So I've got those too, but but we <laughs> like snakes. So if you don't like snakes, stop building snake houses for them. All right. Yep. Um, now another thing that that's good is if you go outside, there's a snake on your porch or on your sidewalk, your driveway. You know, one thing, just grab your water hose and just spray it with your water hose. That's usually enough to make it just crawl away. All right. Come on, snake. Get out of here. It's not going to get mad at you and come attack you. That's that, not going to happen. Mm -hmm. But just spray it, and it'll just kind of go, you know, go away. But one problem that I, I hear a lot of people talk about is, is they will go out and they'll see. Uh, now I, I keep talking about copperheads because we get a lot of copperheads. But whether it's a copperhead, a rattlesnake, a cottonmouth, uh, any venomous snake, they'll just want to kill it, and they'll say, "Well, you know, I." I only kill the bad snakes. Well, in my opinion, there are no bad snakes, right. but there are people who don't understand snakes. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like, well, you know, it, it, is the copperhead here? If I kill it, I know it's dead. But the problem with that, it, it's um, having a copperhead in your yard tells you you have suitable habitat for copperheads. Mm -hmm. So, and these copperheads have several acres of their home range and all these home ranges of different copperheads overlap each other. So one day you might have one copperhead in your yard, the next week you may not have any, and the next week you might have five. Right. The numbers go up and down. So going out in your yard and killing a copperhead, all that really does is put that person at risk for getting bit. Because most bites happen when a person's trying to kill or catch a snake Absolutely. to begin with. Yeah. Yeah, the, I mean, you know, and I've heard people say, well, I'm not gonna get close to it, I'm gonna shoot it. There have been not just injuries, but fatalities from people shooting at snakes and not being aware of what where the the projectiles going there's or, a story on uh, my on my uh website of a police officer shooting a snake in oklahoma and in the process he killed a five-year-old boy i remember that yeah. yeah that you know people have had you know anytime you're shooting and also let's be honest people can't shoot real well so you're gonna miss it most of the time i just posted <laughs> on our facebook a guy trying to shoot a copperhead he yeah. missed several times mm -hmm. And then I started looking, and there's bullet holes all in his metal yeah. shed. Yeah. His wife was furious at, yeah. at his lack yeah. of aim. When but, a bullet hits the ground, even if it doesn't ricochet wholly, the jacket, the copper coating explodes off of it. Yeah. And there's fragments of metal going everywhere. And that's, Somebody's shooting now. Yeah, that's I bet it's a snake. <laughs> <laughs> that's a snake my neighbor there. dumping a magazine <laughs> off in the woods over there. Um, we live in the country, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so... Um, yeah, that you know that even that's not as safe as you would think, and then certainly getting close enough to try and dispatch it with with a machete or whatever yeah. is is even more so. Because um, then you know an injured venomous snake is worse than just yeah. a regular old venomous snake it will in your yard. You, it, it, I guarantee you. And, and you know one thing I want to point out too is people will often tell me, "Oh my gosh, I just saw a copperhead in my yard. I'm freaking out. I've got kids. I've got dogs. I've got this and that." Uh, well, one thing is, if you have dogs, enroll them in snakeschool.com, and we teach dogs what a snake is, how a snake smells, and that your dog should stay away from it. So snakeschool.com. But here's the most important thing. If you have, let's say, an adult copperhead, how long can a copperhead live? Um, 10, 20 years, yeah, maybe I more? Mean, you know, yeah, probably 10 to 20 years would be a pretty good good life for a copperhead and so here's but here's the thing about that so let's say you've got a copperhead that's 10 years old and you go out in your yard and you see this adult copperhead well that copperhead didn't just crawl there from two states away he's been here in your yard or at least adjacent to your yard for back years, and forth for probably. years mm -hmm. and this is the first time you've ever yeah. seen it some i tell people that and they either it gives them um, the, the willies, knowing that there's so many snakes living that they haven't seen. 
but really you could find comfort in that and that you know he's really not been a problem he just got really unlucky that day he got unlucky because um, the, the copperhead the rattlesnake the cottonmouth their main objective to defend themselves is to not be seen yeah. you know and as long as nothing sees them nothing will kill them and the snakes that live have lived on your property for years you know they have habits that they adjust according to things they need or risks they have in their environment like you so if there are areas you frequent and there's a lot of activity they're kind of they've learned maybe to avoid those areas most yeah. of the time um a snake that wanders in or that you dump out somewhere might not know any better what? so uh we've talked about a lot of things and now you've got a snake it's in your yard or it came out of your house you don't want it there and you don't want to kill it and you want to relocate it or maybe you're a professional who's doing this and you're relocating snakes and this is part of your business well can we just go put them anywhere not really yeah um so snakes like pretty much all animals have a home range a place they're used to living and um if you get them lost meaning moving them far enough outside that home range that it's difficult for them to find their way back they may never find their way back or they may have to go through a lot of obstacles to get there uh, you're putting that snake at risk of dying um, in the same way that if you had killed it you know in your yard uh, you know it may have a chance depending on the snake and the habitat and all that kind of stuff but um, we generally want to be conservative and move snakes as little as possible that's that's my uh, opinion on it um, and what that what little as possible is depends on the situation yeah and so for instance if um one way I try to explain this to people is imagine I took you and dropped you off in a foreign country and you didn't know the language and you had no resources and every human being there refused to help you in any way at all. Would you survive? Uh, I wouldn't. Okay. But you probably would. It's going to be a lot harder for you. It's going to be very difficult. And so when you go and release uh, oh, you like the Burmese pythons and the Everglades. That's one thing that people will say. Well, you know, those are not from Florida, right. and those are thriving there. But how many thousands and thousands of snakes were released, and how many of those, a large majority, I'm assuming, died, I, and I, then the smaller majority are the ones who survived, and now the population is growing out of those. Right. Yeah, it was just, you know, um, finally a lucky few made it, I suppose, and they, they grew from there. You know, thousands of Burmese pythons probably had to die for that to happen. Yeah, and, and, and the, the question that we get, oh man, I don't even know how many times we get this question, is if you uh, have a king snake, bring him to my house and turn him yeah, loose. I get that one all the time. All the time. I, you know, or, or somebody else say, you got copper edge, you need to get you some king snakes. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have suitable habitat for king snakes, you probably already have king snakes right, there. Right. And so just because you have an area where king snakes live and do great does not mean that if we catch a king snake from the other side of the county where you live and relocate him to where your yard is that king snake a good chance he may not survive really yeah yeah they um you know so to use let's say hey, hang on a minute now we're not making this stuff up no, okay no, there's, there's actually been studies on this mm -hmm. where they've actually released and relocated snakes and tracked them and the results have not been good. Yeah, at, at best mixed, and um, in most cases they they almost always find that there's a detrimental effect for the snake. They 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 have to wander around a lot to find resources, and that puts them at risk of predation or getting hit on roads and things. And so I think there was one study with rat snakes in South Carolina where they tried some of this, and it was maybe only like. And don't quote me because I'm probably getting the numbers wrong, but it was something like only 30% lived two seasons, uh, two like warm seasons. Maybe they li continue living after that, but even some of those probably died afterwards. So, um, and that's that was probably a good. I, I I think that was probably a good turnout. You know, now these are adult snakes for the most part. Um, yeah, that's what I was about to get to yeah. because on our YouTube channel. Uh, you will see videos of me releasing juvenile newborn hatchling or, or newborn snakes way away from where we caught them. Mm -hmm. And that's a little different. Yeah. So 
you know, if you think about a snake, whether it's hatched or born, it, you know, maybe this time of year, you know, late summer, fall, um, it's immediately got to sort out where it's going to live, where it's going to get food and water and cover and all that. So when you move one of those snakes, or you're not even moving it really, you're taking it, it's the first place it's been introduced to. Whether it's where those eggs were laid or those offspring were born, or whether it's a place you put them, as long as the habitat's suitable, they're not really any worse off. Still, I guess what I'm saying is most of them are going to die anyway. Yeah. Uh, think Things love to eat little snakes. That's why um, when a, like a, a black racer lays eggs, she doesn't lay one egg. Mm -hmm. She'll lay 20 eggs or you know, 15 or 20 eggs. Yeah. And the large majority of those will become food for other animals. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, you know, they're not any worse off than they would be if they were put back out in the exact same place that the, the, the eggs were laid. Um, you know, so that's why it might be a little different for, for hatchling snakes, young snakes like that. Once they become adults, you know, these snakes can live several years to maybe a few decades in some cases. And uh, they have imprinted on a home range where they know where the food resources are. You know, timber rattlesnakes, you know, there's, uh, uh, in Eastern Diamondbacks, I listened to Bruce Means talk about this the other day, where a year apart to the day, that rattlesnake he was tracking was sitting at the base of the same tree hunting for food. It knows that spot, just like a hunter has certain tree stands he likes to sit in. Snakes are kind of the same way. They have places they go to get food. They have refugia they get into holes in the ground in the winter to escape the cold. They know and they know them. where these holes are. They are. They yeah. know exactly where they're going. You know, we've tracked some rattlesnakes uh, here in Georgia, timber rattlesnakes, and they make um, very deliberate movements for the most part. It's not a random movement. They hunt somewhere for a few days, and if they don't get a meal, they make almost a beeline <coughs> to another spot. And that spot might be a quarter mile away, half a mile away, and then they sit there for a few days. And a lot of times when they're doing that, they may have to go through someone's yard. Right. So right. It, it may not just be they're coming to your yard. Mm -hmm. They may just be passing through. So if you just leave it alone, mm -hmm. it'll just take care of itself yeah, and be yeah. gone. I mean, there's, you know, if you see a, so one clue is like, if you see a snake in your yard and it is, stre is outstretched, it's, it's straight out, you know, not coiled up, it's moving. Yeah. It's not, snakes don't normally do a lot of sitting around laying out like that. Um, that snake's gonna go on its own way in a short period of time. Let's say you have a copperhead though, and it's coiled up in a tight coil up under some bushes or something up against the foundation of your house. That snake could sit there for a couple of days. Yeah, you know, one study I read specifically about copperheads is they were saying that a female copperhead, and, you know, this is generally speaking, mm -hmm. uh, has a home range of about eight acres. And a male, they were saying it has a home range of about 12 and a half acres a or bigger. so. Yeah. yeah. And then what I thought was interesting was is they calculated how far these snakes would travel in one day. And it wasn't much. It was like a little over 50 feet. Mm -hmm. That's about it. So they'll go from that hiding place to this hiding place. Mm -hmm. And they'll hang out. Yeah. Then they go to the next hiding place. So it takes them a while to move around. But they're not just usually coming and just living in your yard mm -hmm. for 10 or 15 years, whatever the lifespan right. is. Right. Yeah, so um, yeah, that snake will likely move away on its own. But... but Let's say you have a copperhead sitting in your yard and you just, you really can't have it there. Maybe you've got pets in the yard or kids or something like that. I understand, you know, even, even in my house, I might not leave one coiled up by my steps, you know. Um, you know, at that point you can move that snake. Now, how you go about doing that, you know, again, it, it's, it's a venomous snake, so treat it that way. You know, you can use the sweep it into a trash can or in, Sometimes if you just lay a trash can on its side and it's a dark space, it'll go in on its sometimes own. Sometimes yeah. it'll just crawl into it, yeah. you know, to hide from you. And then you can just lift the trash can up and you've got him. Um, you know, but either way, you get that snake in a bucket or a trash can or something, and now you're going to move it. So eight to twelve acres for a copperhead, let's say, and that's the case also for some other medium-sized snakes, rat snakes, and things like that. Um, that's not very far to get outside that home range. I mean, yeah. What, so you know, if you're if you're driving a half mile away, that's a long way. You're way outside yeah. of this range. Yeah. yeah. You know, I hear people cite all kinds of like rules of thumb. There's usually not much science behind it. These are just numbers that people have come up with off the top of their heads. People say don't relocate snakes more than a mile. 
a mile is a long way even for our biggest most wide ranging snake and so like even a timber um, rattlesnake a timber rattlesnake a mile is a long way you know yeah. a, a female has a home range of about one square miles a male mm -hmm. about one and a half square miles mm -hmm. And but if you go a mile, you may be going a mile outside of his range. Yeah, that mean you you're in his range. That snake on the edge of his range, and then take him the opposite way. Yeah. So, you know, you don't really know. So again, now, now some people could not care less about what we're talking about. They're like, "What do you care? Kill the thing." <laughs> right. But there's a lot of people yeah. who understand snakes mm -hmm. and don't want to kill them because they actually see the value in these animals. And so this is for them. But the 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 hard part of this is getting people who have been relocating snakes for years and who love snakes to understand that if you're taking this thing a long distance, you're kind of killing it. Yeah. Maybe slowly, but you know, that's, it's quite maybe likely the case. Um, so, you know, I've heard people say a quarter mile and that's probably more reasonable. A quarter mile is like, I don't know, 400 yards or something like that. Um, that's probably reasonable for a lot of snakes. And, and um, now let me stop you here because some people will be like, well, you know, it's just going to come back to my yard. Yeah, but how <laughs> long has it been in your yard and you hadn't seen mm -hmm. it in years? Yeah. So if we're going to re relocate it over to these woods over here, it's going to eventually come mm -hmm. back. But chances are you're probably never going to see probably, it again. Yeah, yeah, you'll probably never see that snake again. Uh, <coughs> we have uh, <coughs> chickens. And uh, we have multiple rat snakes like that. I think we've had at least four different ones just in the last year come visit our chicken coop. And they come um, to get eggs mostly. Uh, we did have one try to eat a small chicken. Um, and, and so we did lose one chicken, but that's, that's unusual. Normally they're there either to get eggs or the mice that come around to, to get at the chicken feed. Um, and so, you know, we just, get those snakes out of the coop. I know it's a rat snake, so I'll just reach in there and pick it up. They're usually in the nest boxes looking for eggs. Uh, you can also use a stick, or, or if you have a snake cook, that would work as well, to kind of lift it up and help get it out. And um, we just take them, you know, maybe 100 yards off into the woods and uh, let them go. And we haven't seen the same snake back yeah and some people will say well i don't want it to come back at all so i'm just going to kill it or i'm just going to relocate it way you know way away but the the thing people don't understand is if you have chickens mm -hmm. you have that's a suitable food source eggs and mm -hmm. mice everything else um same thing if you, if you don't have chickens if you just got a copperhead in your yard mm -hmm. and you kill the copperhead people think they've done something okay yeah. but all it tells you is you have suitable habitat for copperheads. Mm -hmm. When you're removing a snake or you're killing it, just frees up resources. It just for frees up resources yeah. for another snake. You know, so you want to change the habitat is what you mm -hmm. want to do, and changing the habitat over time will reduce the number of snakes mm -hmm. that you have, does especially it, if you don't want does snakes. Doesn't mean one won't pass through every yeah. now and then. It probably doesn't like to. But that's uh, that's but, where people need to yeah. spend their money, mm -hmm. not on snake repellent. Because most mm. snakes that people see, they don't try to figure out what snake it is. They try mm. to figure out which venomous snake they think right. it is. They've already decided it's so, either it's either a copperhead or a rattlesnake. If it doesn't rattle, it's a copperhead. If it's in the water, it might be a cottonmouth. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. So I mean, that's most like most of them aren't aren't venomous. Um, but you know, their copperheads are a common snake, and so they they do show up a, a fair bit. So one last thing I want to say, I've never met one person who knew a lot of accurate information about snakes and also didn't like them. You know, fear of snakes comes from a lack of knowledge. And maybe you're a person who doesn't want to learn about snakes, but spending a bunch of money to do unnecessary things is also not going to help you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you know, take a little bit of time. Uh, hopefully you, this video has helped you and you know, there's some resources on our website that may help you as well. But there's things you can do to lessen how many snakes you have around your house. And it's really not going to cost you that much money to do it. It's things you can do yourself. Yeah.